Sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar. Another week with Coach Jim Ramazinski, Coach Ram from the Evergreen Park Mustang football team. How are you, Coach? Good. How are you? Good, good. You know, I, I was I was sad to see that uh, it was not a victory in a game that looked like it was pretty winnable. It was a very close score uh, last weekend, and uh, you were just telling me, you guys, you guys kind of crushed it in a lot of categories, but except for the one at the end, which is the final score, kind of, kind of let me in on that. Yeah, no, I mean, we, you know, we had more offensive yardage on passing, rushing, everything. Um, we we were playing pretty good defense throughout the game. We gave up one big play early that was kind of a problem, but other than that, once we got settled in, we were good. And um, unfortunately, we lost the turnover battle, the one big category we lost that four to one and we end up losing the game by five points yeah that's a that's a rough one when that happens I mean and the guys are feeling like we did perform really well we just had these miscues that kind of screwed up everything right yeah like how do you how do you talk to them about that afterwards because you you know you you don't want to really want to get into like oh we lost this game because you you see probably a lot of positive things on the field but then, you know, the miscues are really turnovers, and that, that's something I'm sure you talk about. How do you address the team with that? Well, it, we talked about we, we just can't win football games if, if that's happening. But, on a, you know, on a positive note, there was a lot of – it was a strong finish by us, uh, high effort. I was proud of the boys in a sense that they were playing tough till the, uh, till the last whistle. And, you know, the, the good thing is you come back on Saturday, we have practice in the morning – uh, we watch the film. Everybody seems to understand, hey, you know, we we made these mistakes, but the effort's been there so far at practice this week. And all I mean, we say this all the time, probably say this once a week on here. It's it's kind of football's like life. You know, when things don't go well, you, you could do one or two things. You could either kind of shut down and just kind of let it continue to happen, or you can get yourself back up and keep working. And I was happy to see the guys ready to work on Saturday and ready to work on Monday, and we're looking forward to the game this week. All right, so we'll get to the game this week, and we'll we'll get to some of your performers here in a second, but when you mention that the next week, it's easy for somebody to look at your schedule, say two and two, and probably a couple of plays separates you from being four and oh, or at least three and one, and you have five left, and we all know what the count is that you probably want to get to to get to the postseason. How how hard is it to get that all out of your head and just focus on the next game ahead of you? Because you probably feel like a better team than what the record shows, but you know you need to make some hay now over the next couple of weeks, right? Well, the good thing is we 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 know that we're like you just said, a couple plays away from being four and zero or at least three and one. So we know that the capability is there. We know the ability is there. Now it's just you know, like we talk about here every week, you gotta you gotta come out. And you got to play a game all four quarters and finish the game. And, you know, the, the count that you mentioned, yeah, that's always on mine, but nothing happens um, three weeks from now this week. It's got to happen this week. We got to keep working. And Shepard's a tough team. Uh, they're coming in, they're good. They watching them on film, they have some nice players, they're well coached. Uh, we're still looking forward to the challenge, of course. And, if we continue to kind of minimize those mistakes in the game, I thought again last week, I thought practice was good. It's just, you know, you get out there, make some key mistakes. It happens. It's high school kids. You move on. You hope that those don't continue in the next game. All right. So before we move to Shepard, who are your big performers? Anybody you want to highlight? Yeah, we had um, David Johnson did another nice day, 80 yards rushing with a touchdown. Um, Arshon Powell, 10 catches, 123 yards, touchdown. He was kind of all over the place, as always. Genesis Ward had a big day on defense. The D-line played really well as a unit. Uh, Genesis Ward, three tackles for loss, sack, forced fumble. Uh, Anthony Luna got in there to recover that fumble. So and the defense as a unit, I thought, played well. Uh, they did have one uh, mistake at the beginning of the game that was costly, but after that, getting settled in, only giving up one more touchdown um, on defense. A lot of it, a couple times it was sh- short field on us and we got some stops. Uh, I thought they played well as a unit and I was happy to see that. All right. So now we have a home game. And I found it really interesting. Like your homecoming is not this week. 
it's next week afterwards, even though homecoming always makes me think that you're coming off a road game. So, like, why is that, first of all, before we get into Shepard? I think it's because we only have three home games this year, and that just, you know, kind of... That one looked good on the calendar. Yeah, this, the last <laughs> the last home game looks good on the calendar okay. for this particular year. Obviously, we don't want that to, the schedule to work this way in the future, and we're working on that. But um, this was because of that whole one and one thing, though, right? When you did the contracts with the two teams that you run up against at the beginning of the year, because last year you had two home games against them, you got two visiting games yeah. and the schedule didn't work out really well for you with an, an amount of games in your own place. No, and you know, last year it's great. You got six at home during the regular season. You know, it was it was it's not bottom line playing on the road is harder. Yeah. And I mean, you hear professional Coaches and athletes talk about it as well. Uh, you hear major college programs talk about playing on the road is harder, and it, it just is. Um, but it's still, it's you know, it's not an excuse for us to lose a game on Friday night. I'm, we're we're looking forward to coming back home, being in the home crowd. Uh, the last environment we had at the game, our first home game against Oklahoma was a really good environment during the game. Like there was a lot of fans there. We talked about it last week on the show. It was a lot of fun. And we're looking forward to getting back home and playing a very quality opponent. And fans should get out because honestly it's Shepard and then blue Island. And then that's it. Yeah. You know, unless you, you make the playoffs and get a home game, like that's, that's it in front of the home crowd. So get out against Shepard. Tell me a little bit about this team that you're facing. What do we know about them? Uh, they're they're a talented team. They're uh, they're off to a good start. They're three and one. They have uh, uh, very nice skill players. Good good offensive line. Uh, pretty pretty tough defense. They're well coached. I know uh, last year their frost off team was uh, pretty good. So a lot of those guys are up. They have some returners coming back. They got a transfer in at uh, QB. They're, they're a nice team. And like I said before. They, they have a lot of parts that are really strong, but we still feel like we match up well and we're excited to play them. Do you try to judge a team like that this at this point in the season based upon who did they face and what their record is? Did that ever come into play when you're trying to figure out how tough they are? Or is oh, that yeah. more your evaluation of film? Because I, I can look at their schedule and say, okay, well, their only loss is Joliet West, which from what I can tell is a pretty good program. And then they get Brooks, Bremen, and Argo. And you go, okay, well, that's, I'm not going to say it's an easy schedule, but it's not, it's not going through, you know, barbed wire to get, to get to you guys. So, so it, do, is that an unfair way to assess a high school football team? Is it more about the tape for you? No, I, you always look at the schedule and who they played. You okay. have to, I mean, because, you know, the reality is different, uh, different conferences have, you know, different levels of football teams. Um, so they they've played a they've played a couple nice teams. They've done well against them. They they've earned their three and one. They're they're a good team. We're excited for the challenge. But you you, you got to look at both. I mean, you you look at who they're playing. You can't assume, you know, that okay if they played some teams that maybe aren't as high or high level as others. And I'm not even talking about Shepard. I'm just talking right, right. In, any team. I'm just talking in yeah. general. You know. Do you look at the scores of those games and kind of see how that translates? Sure, but you, the film helps. It's a combo of both. How do you and, get film? Is it something like to, to programs exchange it? Do you how do you, how do you how do you do that? Because this school, isn't like this isn't like it's on the NFL Network the next day. The, the, you know, it's not like you have a scouting department that goes out in front. Do you? So I mean, like, how do you how do you pull that off to learn about your opponent every week? The old schools are coaches who, if there's any listeners out there who coached years and years ago. They're going to be mad at saying this. They used to have to, I remember my high school coaches having to drive, meet people, exchange, whatever, VHS tapes or <laughs> DVDs, whatever it became. Uh, now you can share through the huddle, okay. um, which is pretty convenient. It's it's nice. Uh, if you want to go find additional film, you got to do that on your own, however you choose to do that. But um, no, it's, it's it, we, have, we have a conference rule as well. Like you yeah. have to... You have to share two films with a conference opponent. So, oh, so you have to give them film of you. Yeah, is that like a, okay. Because I always wonder, like, 
you know, I love the uh, TV show Friday Night Lights, right? Coach yeah. Taylor, it's my guy, all right? I still have not watched it. You've I never know. watched I'm it? Like the, uh, you, you gotta, you gotta I've see, heard a lot of people you say gotta you gotta watch, watch it. You gotta watch it and enjoy yourself some Tim Riggins, okay? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you, gotta, you gotta enjoy that, okay? But, but um, he always is watching film. Like, it's something that's always happening during a TV show. He's getting ready for another high school football game, and he's sitting there on his couch in his living room, and like... You know, he's not even paying attention to what's going on in the house because he's got to get ready for the game. And I always laugh, like, where does this come from? But it sounds <laughs> like it sounds like at least in this conference, you guys have to exchange some. Yeah, I think that's pretty standard in most conferences now. But our our rule is you have to share two of yours, and they have to share uh, two of theirs as well. And you know, as as a coach, coaching staff, we can pick what two they want or I'm sorry, what two we want from them, yeah. and they pick what two they want. Okay, and, so they pick what they want from you. Yeah. Okay, so you don't get to pick the film. Like, okay, here's a film, really vanilla stuff. We're going to give them this thing. Like, you get to pick what no, they No, they're going to pick. And yeah. a lot of times when you're in conference. Because I always think of, like, how can I how can I gain an advantage? Like, okay, we're going to send them this film here because this isn't giving anything away. But, okay. They'll pick, and a lot of times they're going to pick when you're playing another conference team because then – they have film on them right? as well, especially, obviously, if they haven't played them yet, they're playing them later in the season. It's Honestly, it's, it's, a, it's, it's much simpler now than it was years ago. It's, yeah. it's, Huddle makes it simple, and the conference rules make it uh, accessible for everyone. All right. Any big plan, any big focus, anything that you're telling your guys going into this contest? No, we just got to play physical football. Shepard's a physical team. They got a tough running back. Uh, they got a tough defensive line, linebacking group. Um, so just got to play physical. I was really happy to see our D line uh, step up in some physicality last week. I also, you know, like we've talked about, the offensive line keeps continuing to take positive steps, which is great to see. Uh, and yeah, we, we just got to execute on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, thinking back like let's think back to the last two games you know it seemed like it seems like both of the last two games one side of the ball was performing really well and the other side was just not quite as sharp we need to get to a point where both sides of the ball are looking good at the same time and we were able to get one win out of that but then the next week we weren't and you know that's football they're again they're it's high school kids we're trying our best to prepare them to win and be winners, not just on Friday night, but in general. And, you know, it, it's it, it, playing football is a hard thing. That's why, you know, there's a lot of people who do it, but there's a lot of people who don't do it. There's a lot of people who won't even try it because I think it's tough. I see it even with my own son. He's in fourth grade. He started this year. And even him, you know, he didn't, he's not used to practicing five days a week in a game every day after school. And I keep telling him, you know, this is kind of how it is. And he's, he's starting to enjoy it more and get used to it, but it, it's not an easy thing. Uh, but like I said, I'm, I'm proud of our effort at, uh, throughout the game, fought hard, came back with a positive attitude on Saturday and on Monday's practice. And I know that'll continue this week and we'll be as prepared as possible for Friday night. All right, Friday night, Shepard, uh, the, the Mustangs looking to get win number three. Uh, game starts at 7 p.m. in front of the home crowd. Get out there and support your team. Uh, one of only three home games they have yeah. all year long. So get out and support the Mustangs. They want to win this weekend, and, and good luck. Yeah, the home field atmosphere at Evergreen is really good. Our administrative team, our principal, uh, Matt Dugan, Jim Solden, our AD, and every, all the tech people, they've done a great job of making this a fun experience for the students, for our players, for the families, and for all the fans. So we hope to see you out on Friday night. It's the EP Podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP Podcast. Evergreen Park. <laughs>